Hello, I'm Tiffany Barsotti of HealAndThrive.com and I'm here to tell you a little journey, a brief journey, about my story of becoming a healer, a reluctant healer. I really did not want this job in the world. I, perhaps this is why I'm good at it, but I really didn't want this job in the world. And at school, when I finally went to it, we learned something called detached compassion. And I have found that this has actually been very helpful. And perhaps there is really a gift and an art form and a skill that is about detached compassion. As a kid, my journey was really of being very much an empath. And I didn't know about this idea of detached compassion. And as a kid, what I had was very sensitive to my environment and prophetic dreams that I actually thought I was causing the disasters in the world that would be in the news and the newspapers in the following days. And for a four, five, six-year-old, when all of this was really happening for me, it was really disconcerting and I didn't want to sleep. And I was also, didn't know this at the time, but very clairvoyant and able to move objects, mostly when I was very angry. And that it felt, it felt to me that my life was out of control. I didn't know what was actually happening with this super sensitivity of everybody that came in the house, knowing information that they didn't know about themselves. But something that was actually very helpful is being able to read when a person's energy was congruent with their words, what was actually coming out of their mouth, if it was truly congruent with who they are. And that, as a kid, I think all kids really have that, but to all of a sudden become so hyper aware, it would just be very disconcerting and undoing. So I spent a good portion of my life early, in those early days turning it off. I also had my first out of body experience when I was seven years old. So I really wanted to do everything in my power to never have another one of these experiences again. So skip to now I'm doing things in the world and I'm about 18 or 19 and I get an astrological reading. And in, in my teenage years, I really was interested in, in music and the arts and marketing and really being a business person and was enthralled with all of the areas with being able to work with and manage people and manage careers, which is what I ultimately ended up doing in the entertainment industry. But it, this astrological reading that our dear friend had given me as a gift, a gift to my mom at 18 or 19, she said, you're a healer. You're, this is some, you're here to help people help themselves. And you are um, gifted at massage, at therapy, at counseling, or any of these things that I had zero interest in. I didn't want any of that. And it hearkened back to me to these early sensitivities that I had as a, as a young kid. And I did everything in my power to push that away. So I was telling her this in the reading about how difficult this was for me to be hearing this, that this is my life journey. And this is absolutely not what I want. And her next reply was, well, don't worry, you're also a late bloomer. So I accept that now and having gone to school graduate seminary in my late 30s and deciding that okay this is i'm going to have to walk this path it didn't come easily at i spent about 22 years in in the music industry and was very successful at it for periods of time it's definitely a rocky business filled with ups and downs but for the most part i was successful in it and one day, living across the street from Ground Zero, and this was in New York City at Ground Zero, in a building that had only been inhabited um, recently, and it was as the, the buildings had already come down, so I was not there for when the actual disaster of those buildings falling happened, but I was there when they were taking apart all of the buildings that were in the surrounding neighborhoods because of the damage that had been done. So, as a result of that, I got very sick and I didn't know what was happening for a really long time. I would lay in my bed and not be prepared for what was going to happen to me psychically, physically, emotionally, any of it. 
all of a sudden I, I felt like I was this portal of an operation system for these beings to to move through that were sort of stuck in in this weird um, place of turmoil. Uh, the Tibetans have a, a name for it called the the world of Bardo, where you're not quite dead and you're you're not alive either. So that became my skill set, I so to, so to speak, but not before it made me very ill. I had all kinds of maladies and disorders going on and I won't go into the graphicness of it because it was awful and I would come out of this these scenes sometimes I would be in in meetings and all of a sudden I'd be like pulled into memories of what was actually happening in that downtown area and for some reason things started coming out of my nose like I had matter literally falling into my hands I actually thought my brain was coming through my nose it was very very dramatic and here I was sitting in a, in a law firm and all of a sudden I would just gush with blood and so I had my nose cauterized like five or six times I had seen cardiologists pulmonologists all of these people couldn't really get rid of this this chronic bronchitis um, horrible coughs, just it was a, a, a nasty situation. Finally one doctor said to me, you know we, we really don't know what else to do for you and you are likely going to have to be put on that watch list for mesothelioma for some of the people that were in lower Manhattan. And I, I remember feeling at that time going, oh my god, no way, I, I'm not going to go on that list. I, I don't I don't want to be uh, labeling myself with such a sickness that was pretty much a death sentence in the way that they had delivered the news. So after a couple of moves into upper Manhattan and then uh, overall moving out of Manhattan and into New Jersey, I laid on the floor still sick. This is at least two years later, still sick and laid on the floor and had an intuitive uh, a voice that came and said very clearly, go to a medical intuitive. So I did. And I called somebody in Manhattan, found her right away, got in, luckily, right away. And she comes out of her trance-like state in our very first meeting and says, you have three days to make up your mind. Now, I just started crying and I, actually I, I didn't cry right, right away. I was mortified and stunned and I was like, well, what does this mean? All well knowing deep inside, I knew. I knew there was something and I was doing important work in, in the entertainment industry, but it was not on my path. And because of that, I had to step up and change some things. So when she said, you have three days to make up your mind, I essentially had to get to a point of where I had to surrender into this journey. And that surrendering is where things shifted. I made my mind up that I was going to go to school and learn about the things that I've always been interested in, which was medical sciences, physics, quantum physics to be exact, spirituality, and how all of these things go together. So that was the journey that actually helped to wake me up. And I still operate today using detached compassion with myself and with others. So I'm looking forward to talking with you about this journey, if it's meaningful to you, if it speaks to you in any way. I'm told sometimes that my story is inspiring. I, I just see it for, for what it is and, and the truth for what it is. But if it's meaningful to you, I'd love to hear that and your story and how it relates. Thank you.